Eat your heart out, YouTube. This is Cannibal Red coming at you with episode number seven of our Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate Let's Play. So if you missed the last episode, you should go check it out. It should be the one previous to this in the playlist where we tackled a Tetsu Cabra, took down the giant poison monster froggy thing. Great, great battle. Hugest monster we fought by far. But since we did that, Hearth which is the location we're in, is now doing pretty darn well. The only thing that's left is uh, kind of to get the the uh, lava running back, which we haven't done yet, and then to get the ingredients necessary to make a ship for our caravan. So I did do a little bit of uh, gathering and slurped up some resources in between these episodes so we can actually upgrade our weapon once more into the power gash here so let's do that and we can see what the next one looks exactly the same the massive gash here but what ingredients do we need to make it monster bone large killer beetles dragonite ore. so we actually won't be able to make that upgrade i think until we get to the next area almost but let's get straight into this and grab the mission we need to hunt a gypsaros so this is the one we're doing hunt a gypsaros uh, we can see the subquest is wound his crest, which we can assume is his head. Let's get into this battle. I'm really excited. I missed a week with these uploads. If you missed it uh, and didn't get to enjoy the content, I'm really... I apologize for that, but my mic was, like, out of commission, out of order. It didn't want to do what I wanted it to do, and I was very frustrated. So, uh, maybe we'll bring some extra episodes. We're eating for defense and for riser right now. And Bilbo and I are going to chai down and get to fighting this Gypsaros. Now, this should be a really interesting creature. It looked, uh, it had like the little dragony symbol, um, so we can assume it's going to be a winged creature. Grab our first head and all this junk. And we do see that there's an extra item here that we haven't seen before, and it's an antidote. So, um,. Removes all traces of poison from your system. That is kind of foreshadowing the fact that uh, this monster is going to be poisonous. So we have a poison dragon. At least that is what we can safely assume at this point. We've got these dudes chilling over here. So let's find this guy. Um... I'm gonna honestly do my best when I see when I see poison. Like it can be extremely detrimental to your gameplay. So we only got two antidotes. So if we get poison more than twice, we won't be able to get rid of it very very easily because uh, I didn't bring those extra items. But this is his uh, little field of play. Hmm. Yes. Interesting area. Oh, it's not. That big monster just snuck up on us and did like the chicken dance. Oh, dang. All right, so he's pretty much moving. Oh, he's climbing. Oh, he's on the ceiling. Okay. Well, obviously this thing is stupid AF. Climbed all the way up the wall, got on the ceiling, and then fell down. But the flashing... Oh, Okay, so that was like a fake out. This monster is going to fake his death. And then this right here. So we see the flashes. We're going to... Oh, and we get stunned by it. So if we see the flashing, we know that this monster has the ability to stun us. Now there are ways to get out of it that I'm going to show you. It's called the Superman Dive. Which you do by running and holding down both triggers and then pressing B. Now, I'm going to attempt to mount him early on. Oh, we're going to get hit by that stun. Oh, we rolled out of it, fortunately. If you roll at just the right point, you can get out of it that way. Um, but honestly, that Superman dive is the best way to do it, I think. Okay, so we're going to get our first mount. The first one's always really, really easy to get on his back. And we're just going to stab the crap out of this guy before he can throw us off. So down he goes, and we're going to target his head, uh, get our unsheathing power attack on him, and break his crest. 
weapon power has decreased. So it would appear as though his crest is um, pretty well... Ooh, I felt so cool for dodging that. Um, that his crest... Oh no, he stole an item! Matchalite ore? Why did they even bring that into this mission? Okay, so there's the flash. And we're gonna... Oh, I didn't dive. I rolled. Oops. So we're going to have to work on that, because this leaves us way too vulnerable, and he's stealing more of our items. And I'm not down with that. And... That was him spewing poison. Um, fortunately, we didn't get poisoned, but he, we did take some damage. So I'm going to run over here. I'm going to first aid up, and then attempt another mount, I think. Well... There we go. See, a Superman dived through that, so he didn't get stunned, which is bueno. Missed the jump, but also dodged the poison. And he's a lot like the uh, the Yi and Kutku, I, which I think was like episode two or three of our uh, Let's Play. He was another one of these uh, kind of like armless Waverns. Wavern is just like the word for dragon. Um, we're going to try and get out of that flash zone. But we were not safe even though we were behind him. Our armor actually says it halves uh, stun. But that was still an extremely long time to be stunned. There we go. So we got a knockdown, which means we can run over here. Smash his face a little bit. Okay. Um, anyway, but he was like the... He's like the Yi and Cuckoo in a lot of ways. Um... And, uh, anyway, wingless wyverns, yi and kutku, same kind of attack patterns, which is why I'm not, uh, extremely intimidated by him. Uh, the only real difference is that this guy spits poison instead of spitting fire. And this guy can climb walls, which we didn't see the yi and kutku do. So I'm gonna get over here. And get these strong attacks in. I really just want to get that subquest, subquest, break his head. And Bilbo pops up like right in the middle of the fray. I, I think his head has got to be pretty wounded. We did really good damage to it. And I believe that's him running. Uh, like away. Obviously he's running. So he's going to fly. Um, and in this area when they fly they kind of go through that hole. And disappear. And I didn't paintball him. I gotta keep remembering to paintball these monsters, which is a way to track them when they run like that. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't do that again. So we're just gonna have to kind of guess that he went this way. We can actually sharpen our weapon, though. That would be genius, right? We saw that our weapon um, got beat up almost immediately. But it, it sharpens so fast, and that's because of our ability sharpener. Um with this armor. So definitely useful. I feel I would feel comfortable doing that in the middle of a battle almost. Um, because it's so very fast. I really feel like he should be in this area. So I'm not quite sure. There's, I think there's only a few areas he will travel to. He doesn't really go in the same area we fight the Tetsukabra in. That giant... Uh, I don't know, that giant area, whatever that was. Like, the lower levels. So this guy likes to stay in kind of, like, the higher areas. Which makes sense. So he's not here either. Which kind of tells me I'm probably going to have to backtrack. I'm going to go down here. But I... I do think this is a pretty interesting monster, um... I, the, the, I think the, the biggest thing about him is, like, the flash, uh, the flashbang. I think that's a really, really cool ability. And it really, as a player, you really need to get that, like, that, uh, Superman dive down. Because once you can Superman dive through, uh, like, the flashbang, it'll be extremely useful later in the game. Because it gives you so many frames of invincibility. Uh, and you can see I'm just backtracking now, because I don't really... I don't know where he is. 
But yeah, Superman Dive comes in extremely clutch. In fact, there's pretty much one monster, uh, at least one monster, that it is essential to Superman Dive. If you do not, you will die. Because it, uh, it does like a massive laser beam attack, and the only way to not be hit by the laser beam is to Superman Dive through it. And it's kind of like a one-shot kill. So, things to keep in mind. I cannot find this guy. We, I don't think, we didn't do enough damage to him to, like, make him limp or anything like that. So, he's just kind of chilling somewhere. And if he shows up in, like, the one area that I said I didn't think he goes to, I'm going to be upset. I feel like a real loser. Not here either, though. This is ridiculousness. There's an area down there, um, but I I am almost 100% sure he does not go down there. So we're going to kind of run up here instead. As far as um, a lot of people have been asking me things like, uh, are you going to play online? Oh, here we are. Look at this. All right. This is like the shortest area on the map. Um, that's why I didn't think he was going to be here. So we can bring him down the ledge, then we can get a jump attack on him. And his tail, um, basically he's supposed to have, like, a rubber hide. So his tail, that's why, it, like, it gets longer when he does that little attack. And it's also why we need to kill him and take his flesh to build our ship. Because, you know, ship in water, rubber floats, and stuff like that. So he is the primary ingredient for building our ship. And we have not been poisoned once. So hopefully... Ooh, dodges. Um, hopefully I can get through this whole thing and be a boss the whole time like that. I would feel wonderful. But poison is very bad. Obviously poison would do incremental um, damage to you, like, like a dot damage over time. Um, and it's just... It can be extremely annoying in the middle of a battle. I feel like we're... We've gotten enough of these jump attacks on him that he should really be um, falling down soon. There we go. Mount number two or three, I don't remember. I think, yeah, three. So we're going to hold on. I feel like that bug could totally knock us off, but good thing it can't. So he's going to go down, and we are going to attempt to crush his crest again. There we go, subquest complete, so that did it. I don't know what his weak points are, um, but honestly, there's a website called Kiriniko, or the Monster Hunter Wiki, which will tell you uh, where monsters' weak points are. I haven't done that for any of these so far. I'm just kind of like working off assumptions and memory. Um, I would assume hitting something in the face would do pretty good amounts of damage. Um, it's almost always a weak point on monsters. So we can see he's running now, and we got a flinch. Uh, we got more than a flinch, I guess. Okay, so this is this is him going down. He's like, it shows him as dead even on my map, but he totally was not dead, and absolutely can hit you with like a fake out attack. And now he's running. So that is something to keep in mind. When you are fighting this monster, he will fake his death hardcore. And you'll walk up and you can see how much damage his uh, his attack did right there. That was like the strongest hit we've taken the entire time. Um, bug, seriously. Um, anyway, that was a huge, huge hit. So if you do fall victim to his fake attack right there, it can be absolutely detrimental. It looked like he went that way, but I... I really don't think he did. I think he flew over here. Because his nest is actually this way. And uh, we did see the limping. Plus the fake death. Which means he's got to be. Got to be feeling some hurt right now. And this battle has gone really really well for me so far. So this is his nest. We're going to retarget him. And we can see that he is here. Uh, sleeping. We are actually, um, I'm actually going to do the charge attack on him, because I don't get to use the attack very much. 
Look at this fool, though. We're going to hit him right in the tummy and get a massive hit. Unrelease a full charge on him, which I feel great about. And now, jump on his face. So, like I said, he's almost definitely about to die. There we go. Uh-oh, let's get away from the tail. And we can see, like, this little kind of poof thing coming from his face. Um, I guess that's because we broke his head. That was a good hit. And with his head broken, he actually, he can't use his flash attack on us anymore. Which is super cool. Uh, makes it really important to break that head if you're having trouble dodging the flashbangs. Our stamina's gotten really low, so I'm kind of worried about dodging him now. But I feel like we could beat him. So this is him trying to flash, but nothing happens. So really important to keep that in mind. There we go. And we get another mount. This mount might actually kill him. I feel like he's he might have such low health that this could do that. And I'm getting pretty good at these rodeos. Going down. Let's do the unsheathing attack. Bilbo, help me out here. We'll do the up and down combo this time. And there he goes. Now that is a real death. See, the first time it didn't enter that cutscene, it just kind of like faked you out. Like, ah, oh, I'm dead now. But if you just wait for the cutscene every time, you'll, you'll know when he's faking it. But that was a really good battle. I feel like I did extremely well. Um, I... I got hit by his, like, fake-out attack, uh, but I wasn't really that worried about it because we've been doing so well during the match, but... Uh, so if I'd been playing a little bit more pro, I would have, I would have just, like, backed up, but I kind of wanted y'all to see that uh, he would, he would, like, jump up and do damage and stuff like that. But he was a really interesting creature. Let's see if we can take a look at him. There's his head, um, where he was causing the flashes. I don't know how he does that. Maybe there's, like, flint or something on his head uh i'm not really sure how that works scientifically speaking but we definitely destroyed this guy and i'm really happy with that battle bilbo i don't i don't actually see bilbo do pretty much anything in that entire match um whereas usually he like heals us or something but we don't even take damage he didn't even need to heal us we're gonna send all these items to the box get back to town and chat it up with these dudes about us getting them the materials that they needed. That was good, though. And the longest gypsy roast we've killed, obviously, at 990 centimeters. Claim struck panic. Gypsy roast will now show up on expeditions. Alright, that was a good, good match. I feel like I'm definitely getting back into the groove of the game a little bit. And the triumphant return. Ah, uh, Bilbo. Hmm. Oh. Okay. Is that the... Hey, that's the ace cadet we saw earlier. But he's got a majorly different weapon now. Bilbo is just running around. Okay. There's a uh, little Miss Forge. And another hunter with a giant gun. Okay, I'm just going to say props to any any person that can use guns and bows and long-range weapons in this game. Props to you. You're amazing. I would love to play with you because you can do something I am not capable of. Now, this guy's got a giant lance. He's got the huge, uh, huge lance with the giant shield. Extremely defensive. Uh, very dangerous. And this dude, freaking Lancelot over here with the dual swords. So it looks like an entire, like, accompaniment or, or group of uh, hunters has joined us. I don't know if I've given this guy a voice before, um, but we'll try it out. You're the hunter. You, really. The hunter is you. Well, maybe it doesn't sound like that. That's a little too deep voice. Lancelot. What, what do you sound like? What? Oh, no, no problem at all. You're just not quite on the same level as my expectations. I hear your services were procured back at Valharbor. You are the hunter. Incredible. 
I knew you were, uh, you were on the ferry to Val Harbor. You're all anyone talked about. I just expected something more. Nothing, pay me no mind, but permit me just one question. Are you prepared to defend the caravan against any danger? I mean any danger. Not just the tiny dangers you can handle. The reason I ask is because if any harm befalls your companions, you will have to answer to me. Personally. Okay, so that guy's a little bit of a douche. Pretty much called me a weakling and said I can only fight weak monsters. This guy. So, this is the ace cadet. We saw him earlier. He had that sword that I totally said was a jaggy sword. And it was actually like a velocidrome sword. But now he's using... A totally different weapon. He's using the Charge Blade, which is another axe-type weapon that is really, really cool. Um, but I don't particularly enjoy myself. But it's a very good weapon. Lots of explosions when you use it. So, the Ace Cadet. Um, did he call me Beardy? That's cool. Hey there, Beardy! How much for that thingy there? Oh no, he's talking to the dwarf. How much for that thingy there? Um, I don't think I've got enough. How about Psycho... Psycho... Psychosermus? Psychosermus? Serums? Psychosermus. Can you hook a... a Nobra up? What? What do you mean you're out? But I really, really need a Psychoserum. Uh, I have a top secret message. Mission, pretty please? Hey, oh hi there! Do I know you? Wait, oh yeah! I saw you back at Val Harbor. What's that? Oh, you talked to the commander. Seriously, he chewed you out during your very first conversation? That's a new record! Uh, he didn't Rathalos with me until, like, our second chat. High five! I've totally got to introduce you to the rest of the gang. Over there, at the Antiquary, is the Ace Gunner. She's really chill. That means she's, she makes, uh, good split-second decisions. I know she saved my butt more than a few times. That guy over there talking to the, the Caravaneer is a vet. In fact, he makes your average vet look like a total noob. He was, supposed, he was supposed to do a, uh, some other mission or something, but he came back just to help us out. What a dude. And the scary looking guy in blue over there who gave uh, you the Blast Furious achievement is the commander. He's not so bad though. In fact, I looked up to him. When I first started out here, he took me under his wing. Yeah, maybe he'll yell at you because uh, he thinks you're pretty okay. That's how it started out with me. Anyway, we're all friends here. Go in peace. <laughs> Alright, Ace Cadet. Um... We'll chat it up with this dude because he has something to say. And he was the one that asked us to get the Gypsy Rose. So, the man over here. Splendid work hunting the Gypsy Rose. Now the Gypsy Rose materials are on the market, I can gather what I need. The caravan will soon have a fine ship because of you. You should be proud. Oh, have you spoken to the street cook? He had a favor to ask of you. Alright, so we can't upgrade our weapons. But, we, he gave us some information about the street cook. Let's just go do that right now. Oh, uh, Waikun. Waikun, I changed his voice. I believe he had, like, a Indian-sounding voice. Um. Mm, very good. Very good. Ah, under splendid timing. The street cook asked me if you could help him get his hands on higher quality materials. However, I need to gather just a few small things before I can make his dairy dreams come true. <laughs> can you help me out? Check the village requests if you want to know all of the delicious details. I am counting on you. All right. Let us make with the transactions. Okay, that is that, and this guy over here had like a lemon grab voice, the street cook. Mm, Hunter, I, I thought of a way to make the Terrarians feel better. I'll cook them some of my number one meals. That's a good idea, meow. A full stomach is the path to true happiness, after all. But to make delicious meals, I need delicious ingredients. The vendor I do business with says they'll send high quality ingredients if I capture a Gendrome. Mm, Hunter, you'll help me capture a Gendrome, right? Mm, it's so easy, I promise. Mm, the Terrarians already got better. Mm, I thought of a good plan for nothing. Oh well. Why not capture a Gendrome anyway so we can upgrade the ingredients? I already gave the, gu the guild marm the quest named Roadwork. For monster capture, you need traps and trank bombs and all kinds of stuff that we haven't done yet, but we will, I promise. So he gave us a new mission. Let's chat it up with this guy, the experienced Ace Lancer. <clears throat> Ace Lancer. <clears throat> ah, the infamous hunter. I have heard all about you from the Caravaneer. The gl it gladdens me that you have found a worthy-looking replacement. I, too, am a hunter. My companions and I are called the Ace Hunters. Gee, no, no wonder all your names start with Ace. 
But really, all that means is that we've been around for too long. Aha! I must say, the caravan looks livelier than I remember it. Perhaps I was the one souring the mood. I used to be a member, you see. Ever since I left, I have wondered if I made the right decision. Not that the guild gave me much choice. They summoned my, me specifically for this new mission. Um, monstrous tasks like this are an honor for any hunter, the caravaneer said. Take care of your new leader. He tried to make my departure easier, and now I know he's in good hands with you. I am confident you will take good care of him and the rest of the group. How do I know? Because he knows. He chose you. Oh, some, some real bonds between the caravaneer and the ace lancer. Just mind he doesn't drag you headlong into danger. He likes doing that. Ha ha. So there's obviously some connection going on there. He used to be in the caravan. We kind of like took his place, I guess, as the caravan's hunter. And then the ace gunner. Oh, hello there. Actually, she's supposed to sound kind of chill, but I, I'm not very good with chill voices. Uh, how goes the hunt? Know you? Of course I know you. You're on the Caravaneer's team, right? It's a pleasure to finally meet you. Huh? You're here to investigate a certain monster? Oh, we are. Uh, serious business, let me tell you. Anyway, we're just doing a quick step over in the village. I hope you've come to build a ship. I hear you've come to build a ship. The ocean is serious business, too. I suppose we should both try to help each other out as much as we can. Have you met our fearless leader yet? He's the guy in blue who looks constipated. Yep, that one. Don't worry, he may not be a champion smiler, but he won't break your kneecaps either. <laughs> I know he didn't lay into you about- Oh, uh, he did. Sorry. Try to pretend he's like a shark while he talks. Uh, you'll totally look at him at a different way. Well, I don't know what a shark is. I'm assuming it's a monster, but we haven't met one yet. But that is kind of the whole caravan. Pretty interesting stuff. I, I'll pick this up just because I know some people are probably going to be like, why didn't you pick that up? It's shiny. It's because it's a pickaxe that I didn't need. All right. We pretty much chatted it up with everyone. Got some new quests. Let's take a look at the quest. Um, hey, Doodle. I heard the story. The, sea, the street cook needs your help. The relevant quest is called Roadwork. So you need to capture a monster this time. If you do it, Doodle, you'll need to have Trank Bombs or Shock Traps or Pitfall Traps as well. The supply items will cover you to some extent, but you can always bring your own to be extra safe. You can always buy material at the market and build your own traps if you want to have a look. Any questions? Of course you have questions. Oh, you want to know about that hunter uh, with the lance the boss was talking to? Mm, that's right, you don't know the story. The four hunters known as the ace, uh, are known as the ace hunters. The guild sends them out with important, sometimes top secret missions. The one with the lance was a member of our caravan until recently. When the mission from the guild came in, however, he left. Now that there are, not that there are any hard feelings, I for one am happy to see him in such good health. Okay, here comes the quest. So, capture a gindrome. Uh, where is that mission? Right here. Capture a gindrome, which is going to be pretty much like the velocidrome, but a little bit different. Uh, he'll be harder, but we can expect like a very fast rap raptory type monster. But that will be happening in the next episode. We are going to wrap this one up right here. We got to fight a, um, not a gindrome, but a gypsaros, which was a really cool battle. Honestly, I'm going to still say the best one so far has been the Tetsukabra, but we played like a pro in this episode, in my opinion. Let me know what you thought about it in the comment section below. Did you like that monster? Um, what did you think of like uh, the kind of flash bomb, the poison that we didn't really get to experience? Thank goodness, because uh, of my dodging skills. But maybe you have some information on the Ace Hunters you'd like to share with me, uh, or now that we're seeing a bit more different types of weapons this guy's got dual swords uh we saw the charge blade lance and gun down there maybe you'd want me to switch up my weapons i still want to switch to stick with the switch axe um but you know i am open to doing whatever y'all are interesting interested in seeing uh i mentioned earlier y'all are really really asking about multiplayer content and i promise i promise it's coming it will be there i will record uh group hunts online and stuff like that the problem is finding people that can work with the same schedule i can when you're looking to make like a group of three or four and play online plus record the video i really need some people that uh that i can trust in the hunt that i can trust to be uh 
responsible and respectable uh, should I choose to record their voices along with mine. But it is in the works. I think I have a few people that might be willing to do some of that stuff. But it'll be a very different experience than the Let's Play. But it is in the works. So I appreciate you guys uh, mentioning it in the comments. And it's, it's great to know that y'all are interested in seeing that kind of stuff. Because I'm interested in doing it. Thank you guys so much. I hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, leave a like, leave a comment. Chat it up with me. I answer almost immediately when you post a comment. So thank you guys again and again and again. Eat your heart out, YouTube. I'll see you next time.